marker beds. In 1977, a young American geologist named Walter Alvarez was studying the magnetism of ancient times recorded in some limestone in Italy. He knew the limestone he was looking at had been formed under the sea and contained microfossils of foraminifera from the end of the Cretaceous period. In 1977, it was widely known that at the end of the Cretaceous period, there was a huge mass extinction that wiped out many species of plants, animals, and microorganisms. Aw. But by far the most famous species that were wiped out were those of the dinosaurs. Walter Alvarez, being a geologist, was very interested in fossils that are much less famous than those of the dinosaurs. He was interested in foraminifera, a microscopic type of algae with thin shells. Scientists call them forams for short. In the limestone from the Cretaceous period, Alvarez found many tiny fossils from many different species of foraminifera, and sadly, no fossils of dinosaurs. Directly above the limestone from the Cretaceous, Alvarez found a thin layer of clay with soot in it. And directly above that, Alvarez found more limestone, but this limestone had very few fossils of foraminifera, and the fossils that he did find were only of a single species. The clay layer showed the period in time when many species, including dinosaurs, were wiped out. When Walter Alvarez went back to the United States, he showed rock from the clay layer to his father, Luis Alvarez, a Nobel Prize winning physicist. Both father and son were professors at the University of California in Berkeley. Luis Alvarez was curious about how long it took between the time when there were many types of forams before the mass extinction and when the forams began to repopulate again. Essentially, he wanted to know how long the period of extinction took place. Luis Alvarez thought that some of his colleagues could use a new technique to help him figure out the exact age of the clay layer. However, when his colleagues tested the clay, they found something very unusual. They found that the clay contained 600 times as much iridium as the surrounding layers. Iridium is a silvery metal element related to platinum, and on Earth, it is extremely rare. But iridium can be found in high concentrations in extraterrestrial objects such as asteroids. Soon geologists reported finding thin clay layers high in iridium all over the globe. In fact, the iridium anomaly layer found worldwide in clays about 65 million years old formed a marker bed. A marker bed is a thin layer of distinctive rock whose origins can be traced to a specific short-term event. Marker beds are used to establish the age of surrounding rock layers. For example, if we know that the dark layer found here is, let's say, 100 million years old, we know that the layer directly below it has to be more than 100 million years old. And we know that the layer above the dark layer has to be less than 100 million years old. The iridium anomaly layer found worldwide led Luis and Walter Alvarez to propose that at the end of the Cretaceous period, an asteroid may have struck Earth and caused a catastrophe that killed nearly 75% of the species on Earth, including most of the dinosaurs. You may not have heard of the iridium anomaly marker bed before, but you've probably heard the widely accepted idea that the dinosaurs were killed off by an asteroid. So you actually know more about marker beds than you might have thought. Marker beds go by many names. Sometimes they're called key beds, marker horizons, or even chrono horizons. And marker beds are created by short-term events. Volcanic eruptions can create marker beds in a few ways. In Iceland, where the whole island is made up of a dark rock called basalt that comes from runny lava from volcanic eruptions, layers of basalt form marker beds. Sometimes the basalt solidifies into solid black or gray rock, and sometimes marker beds are made up of tephra, airy little rocks that are tossed out of the earth during volcanic eruptions. In other places, layers of tuff can form marker beds, particularly if the date of the volcanic eruption that made the tuff is known. Tuff is a rock made from ash from eruptions. 
Sometimes tuff combines with water to make a clay called bentonite. The clay hardens into a rock called shale. Bentonite marker beds found in the central United States were formed when ash from volcanic eruptions combined with water in the Cretaceous period. And any layers found above the bentonite shale beds must be younger than the Cretaceous period 65 million years ago. And anything found below the shale beds must be older. That's how marker beds work. Marker beds can also be formed by sudden events such as landslides, especially landslides that take place underwater. Coal seams are wide deposits of coal. Since coal is formed from leftover materials from swamps, each seam of coal is basically a snapshot layer from a specific time and a specific swamp. Coal seams make great marker beds in places where coal can be found. Marker beds are a little like index fossils. They help us figure out the relative age of rocks and fossils around them. They help us learn something about the past of our planet. And if you know where to look, they can tell a pretty dramatic story. Pretty amazing, huh?